to share it with you. And then after this, I'm going to open it up for any of you that would like to share memories or stories of Nancy. I invite you to do so. Sue writes, Dick and I are so sorry that we are unable to attend Nancy's service. But I wanted to share some fond memories of her. Nancy has been our friend since we came to Spring Hill UCC approximately 13 years ago. We met her when we joined the missions team and instantly hit it off. Nancy was a fun, caring, and giving person. I could go on with a string of adjectives, but all but you all can think of many more that I could add. Nancy was generous. She always took a few names from the Christmas tree over the years to see that a needy child or children were showered with gifts. As many of you do, she usually never settled on getting just what the child asked for. She would frequently give a few outfits instead of just one. And she loved doing this. Nancy was one of my quiet contributors if I needed more money to meet a missions collection goal, which I usually didn't due to the generosity of this congregation when it came to children and missions, she would always say, Sue, if you need more money, just let me know. I'd love to help out. Before COVID changed our world, the missions team used to give a $300 donation to the superintendent's reading initiative, which was a program to encourage children to read over the summer. $100 would come from the mission's budget, and $100 a person came from two anonymous donors. The donors who contributed $100 or more would be listed on the back of t-shirts that were given to campers who had achieved a certain reading goal. One year, the treasurer sent three checks, one from the church and one from each donor, with a note specifically saying that this was a $300 donation from only the church and not the other people. Well, what appeared on the t-shirts for the whole of Bernanko County to see were the church's name, Nancy's first and last name, and the name of other donors. When the church received a complimentary t-shirt and read it, I was shocked. I apologized profusely to Nancy, the other donor, at a missions meeting. They took it all in good humor, and the whole team had a good chuckle over it. But that never happened again. <laughs> Nancy was always there to help put food out, put food into the 15 to 20 Thanksgiving boxes for needy families at Eastside Elementary School, as well as organizing a total of 120 or more Christmas gifts for those same families for Christmas. That was quite a logistical situation, but teamwork accomplished it with everyone's help. It was also a time for fellowship, which we all enjoyed. Nancy was often part of our lunch group back in the morning missions meeting. We had a lot of fun getting to know each other, some more in a social setting. In our many conversations, we would often talk of different places in the D.C. or Northern Virginia area that we both knew of as our daughters, our, our Sue and Dick's daughter lives in the same area. One time, we were paying a visit to Papa Clyde's, where I didn't need to be going. Who did not meet? Who did we? Who did we meet in the car parked next to us? But Nancy and a friend. We had a good laugh over that for a long time, and we had a great impromptu visit. Nancy, I know you wanted to move back to Maine for your final years, but then decided it was too cold and you couldn't do it. Soon after that, we were all sad to learn that that awful word called cancer had invaded your body, cutting your life short. You bravely began treatments and did all that you could do in the time that you had. Now you will be at peace in the state that you love. I love you and miss you and will never forget you. Sue Dick Madison. What a beautiful tribute that was to a beautiful person. Now I invite others of you to share. If you would like to come forward and share, you can. We can bring a mic to you. There's someone helping me in the back. But if you would like to speak, just raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. Okay, 
One, two, there we go. <laughs> okay, yes. It'll be pleasant, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my name is Eve Byron, and uh, I am an adopted brother of Nancy. Uh, I'm all the way from the Bahamas. I represent the crew from Club Labrador, uh, a place she loves to go every year. Uh, and you talk to both of them, Gimmy. Uh, she was very adoptive and gave to a lot of communities in the Bahamas. She loved the Alpha Manutra, the five old guys in, in the Bahamas. Uh, loved Club Lando. Uh, I knew that Nancy didn't have the kids, and uh, when my daughter was born, uh, I decided to uh, let her be my daughter's godmother, you know, so she can actually have someone to say, you know, this is her home. So she's actually godmother of my child, my daughter. Uh, Ivana, who's not here today. Uh, but I just want you to know that she was a very loving person. Uh, everyone I mean, is like you said before, you know, uh, it is even this amazing, you know, the, the life she actually touched, you know. Uh, she was actually like a best friend to everybody she knows, and I'm sure everybody here feeling she was their best friend, you know. Uh, that's, that was the kind of person she was, and I, and I just, you know, I, I would definitely miss her, you know, I wish I would have been there more for her, you know, uh, and I did call up periodically. That's how I got my doctor know that she passed because a good friend of hers heard my voice and decided to give me a call and let me know that I, she had passed. So, but I do appreciate everybody here today, you know, uh, you know, celebrating her life. You know, she, her life is worth celebrating, you know, and she was definitely there for me and my big sister, you know, so and she would truly be missing. Wait, here's an Hello, uh, I'm Torrance Dorset. Uh, it's nice to see you put a lot of uh, faces to the names of Nancy. I met Nancy at uh, Greenberg Troy, a law firm that uh, we both worked at. And um, I met this lady, and we just became friends and we talked a lot. Uh, my wife and I moved to uh, the DC area from uh, Miami, Florida, uh, back in 2000, I believe it was. And we um, didn't know anything about DC, didn't know anything about you know, the area. And of course, Nancy. Just you know, was being Nancy and uh, you know showed us around and uh, we ended up uh, in an apartment complex where she lived uh, to the point where our balconies were in the back. <laughs> so being from Florida um, and never had, actually saw snow one time in '77. It snowed the whole time uh, in Florida, but uh, not other than that, not seeing snow. Uh, it snowed one day, and uh, my wife was actually out of town, and so I didn't know it was snowing. So Nancy immediately called and said, hey, it's snowing. You need to come out of your bathroom and, and see. And so I was excited about seeing snow for the first time. And uh, we were across from each other, but we couldn't actually see each other. It was about six or seven at night. And so uh, we both got flashlights and waved to each other and said hi to each other. <laughs> Really, a, a good moment for for us, and I've had a lot of lot of good moments with Nancy. Um, I've talked to Nancy since she moved. Um, I would say at least once, maybe twice a week, for almost twenty years. Every week, I never. She and I never went and not talked about uh, talked to each other uh, via phone. Um, like the gentleman said. Uh, you know, we, we have two children, and both of them are, Nancy and both, both of them uh, are guard for my mother. It's just, she was just a, a, a joy to, to, to know, uh, to see a person. Pastor talked about her not wanting to, you know, have her name on those shirts. I know exactly what you mean. She, she never wanted to be out front, and that's kind of the kinship she and I had. And so, um, 
The other night, we were getting, my wife and I were getting ready to uh, fly up here from, from the Virginia area, and I got up early and um, one, I wrote down sort of a, a, a couple of paragraphs I wanted to say if that's okay with everybody. Um, it's also nice to see the redhead lady. She, she talked about you guys all the time. So, <laughs> so um, just one second. Called this uh, Nancy Cries. So uh, it says, if you have never experienced someone crying because they will miss you, then you've missed something special. When Nancy retired, I was the last person to see her off. I walked her down to the garage and congratulated her. I gave her a kiss on the cheek and, and hug. Nancy embraced me and cried like I have never seen before. We must have stood in the garage for five minutes just hugging and actually cried. Shortly after she moved to Spring, Springfield, my family and I went to visit and stayed for the weekend. When the weekend was over, we gave Nancy a hug and she cried very hard, as she always did. One year, my sister and I traveled near Cameron and decided to stop and spend a day with Nancy. When we left, she hugged and hugged us and cried. There were, there were many other examples of Nancy sharing love in this way. I had never experienced someone crying because they would no longer see me for a while. I never knew love like that. I never knew the sorrow that someone felt when it would be a while before they saw me again. I never really put myself in the moment and really, excuse me, and then release all of my emotions because I didn't grow up that way. I never used, the, used that moment to reflect on all of the recent and past memories that we shared and then release those emotions. Then, uh, on the morning of November 7th, um, I got up and noticed that uh, Mary Kay Morrow left me a voicemail. Uh, I immediately uh, panicked, and, uh, but I listened and gathered myself. Uh, I felt very sad, but wasn't in the, in, in the moment. Uh, my wife saw me from a ways away and asked, was I okay? Um, I actually turned my back and ended up in that moment. Just about every moment Nancy and I shared rushed back. I hugged my wife and cried. Uh, I know uh, oh, now how Nancy felt each time we left each other. She told me how to love in a different way, and I'm thankful for that. Nancy is a special person, and I will always miss her cries. You're a hard one to follow, Torres. <laughs> um, Nancy cries. Um, but Nancy also laughs a lot, and my time spent with Nancy, we laughed a lot. And so I want to tell you about her last Christmas. Um, last year, um, she was alone and I was alone, and she wanted to see Christmas lights. It was very important that she see Christmas lights. And uh, she hadn't been driving in the last couple of years because of all the medical things, so I went down, picked her up, and brought her to my house, and we had dinner. And I had meticulously um, had a list of 20 houses to look at beautiful Christmas lights in my neighborhood. And for you who are local, I live up in Royal Highlands now, so it's very rural. Um, some roads aren't even paved. Um, and it was very, very dark on Christmas night. <laughs> so I had this list, and Nancy was going to be the navigator. And I had step-by-step -step directions how to get from one house to another. I had a flashlight for her. But as we're driving along, of course, we get distracted. We're talking and we're looking at houses and bleeding and eyeing, and then she's getting confused on her list. 
and we're laughing and like crazy, and we're running out of road at times. We come to get down as the road stopped, and Nancy didn't know where she was on the list. And at one point, we even ended up in somebody's front yard. And we weren't in front of their house on the street. We were in their yard. The road, <laughs> the road ended. I guess in the driveway went to the right. I went straight, and Nancy's yelling, "You're in the front yard!" <laughs> and she just had such a good time. It was such a silly little trip, but she had so much. Um, fun doing that, and she talked about it for months. And then toward the end of our journey, I said, Nancy, we're going to be in the newspaper in two days. It's going to be two old ladies looking for Christmas lights in Royal Highlands and found in a field somewhere. In it. But she talked about that for months, and it was just such a little thing. And then the final lap was when I took her back home in her neighborhood. There were blocks and blocks of little houses. I could have picked her out of her house and run around the block and do see as many houses. But she just really enjoyed that, and so it's those special little memories. And for all of you who have either called her or stopped at her house, you know, it meant so much to her. And I just thank all of you for being such a good friend and chance. She really, really, really loved you. <laughs> I'm glad you were there for her last moments, and I know she knew that you were there with her. Thank you. You might not have gotten as good a story though if we had driven around the neighborhood. So. <laughs> Anyone else? I just like that Adam was with you all because he was able to see lights and to go to school, a virtual tour, and I placed him there so that she could see the Christmas lights and we took pictures and she could hear the kids. And that was one of the things as being a doctor, you know the answer. Always, everyone, or whatever the holiday is, or whatever special one, she said something soft. And he was saying, Nancy, you can replace anyone. You should be singing this. And she says, but I want to. And anyone, and I can tell you this group that knows Nancy, she's the most genuine, caring person you have ever met. Because you dearly missed. And she, I almost touched her. I do want to say that I know that Nancy was close with a lot of people and, and we were all blessed to have her be a part of our lives. And Mary Kay, I don't know if there's a better friend to someone than you than her.
just thank God for her every day. And I was with her at the end, and it was tough. Nancy didn't know she was dying. She lived to the very last minute. I packed her suitcase to go to the beach while she was getting her potassium so that she could travel. The suitcase is in the spare room, still packed. Um, she got through that, and then she got weak, and I had to have her go back to the hospital. I have time to share a story. Well, the nurses at Oak Hill were just wonderful. I, I can't say a nicer group of people. And one afternoon, this nurse came in with purpose and closed the door, and I thought, what's happening? And she said, Nancy wanted to go to the beach. I brought the beach to her. She said, don't think I'm crazy, but I want her to have her day at the beach. She had this bag of sand and very lovingly took off her little socks, put her feet in the sand, and poured sand between the toes. At the same time, she had her cell phone with the beach scene and the sound of the ocean up at Nancy's ear, and she left the room. And she left Nancy and I alone for about an hour. Just talked to Nancy. Nancy wasn't talking. But she knew, she knew I was there. And when the nurse was finished, she came back, turned off the phone, and she cleansed her feet with such gentleness, just as if Christ was there with her. And I knew, I knew it wouldn't be long. And they told me 48 hours. My strength was gone. Then chance comes, and he says, Mary Kay, can I spend the night with Nancy? He said, I can do that. I said, no, you have a sermon. He said, no. He said, some, it was a sermon Sunday morning. This was Saturday night. So I went home with my son, and he had a nice meal for me, and I took a shower and stretched out in bed, and I promised they would call if anything changed. Well, it changed, and chance called, and he said, her respirations are slowing, her heart rate is slowing. I said, I'll be there. He said, do you want to talk? So I talked to Nancy. And it was the first time I ever said goodbye. I got in my clothes. It was a cold night. I had to wear a jacket, trying to get the zipper up. Chance calls and said she had passed. The nurse said her heart rate just slowed down. Her respirations were easy. She was at peace. But what a beautiful hymn to have your pastor sing and pray with you. I miss you, Nancy. I love you. Anyone else? And I do too love saying the red hats. You, you all were a special group <laughs> to her. All of us, in some way or another, have been touched by Nancy McKinney. And I think we're all changed because of that relationship with Nancy. And I think it's safe to say that she very much lives on in all of our memories and all of our hearts. So thank you all for being here today.
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I invite you now once again to stand as you're able in body and or spirit as we sing, I come to the garden alone.
cherishing the memories we have that will never fade away. We ask this prayer now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will have our final hymn, the old rugged cross. And you can stand or stay seated, whichever you prefer. <laughs>
into your hands, God of mercies. We commend Nancy. Ensure and serve the hope that together with the saints before, she is now with you. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. May it be so. Amen. Thank you all for being here today. It has been an honor to celebrate a life so well lived and a, the life of a person that touched more than we will ever know. It's been wonderful to hear the stories that will live on in our hearts long after this service is over. Following our postlude today, you're all invited to a light lunch that will be served next door in the fellowship hall, where I'm sure that we will share more stories and more laughter. And the, the lunch over there, I do want to point this out because I always learn something from Nancy, but I learned something even in the past few weeks. One of the things that you will see on the table over there are beans. And I found out through Mary Kay that in Maine, there are these things called bean suppers. Bean dinners, where all you eat are beans. So that hasn't quite made it all the way down to Florida, so we do have some things other than beans. But we do hope that you'll join us for a light lunch as we share some more memories and laughter about a life so well lived. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.